Today might be a no shower day. Okay, so here's the plan for today. I've got a bunch of original artwork that's just been piling up in the in the uh, studio, and a lot of people have been asking me if stuff is for sale. So I figured today's the day to uh, sign all that and put it online. So I'm gonna do that. Um, a lot of people have been asking for a uh, a, a tour of my bookshelf, uh, the shelf that you usually see behind me in my other videos. So um, so I'll do that really quick. I'm gonna post that up. And, um, and I think that's it. Okay, so you might think this is interesting. These are the original ink drawings for my Star Wars Bounty Hunters that I did a couple weeks ago. And what I'll do is I'll ink them on their own sheet of paper, then I'll scan in the inks, print them out on a separate sheet, and then I color, um, I color on the printout inks. And that way I can preserve my ink drawings if I need them for later, for anything, if I want to scan them for digital color. And I have my own separate um, colored drawings as well. Okay, so I want to lay out all the, the drawings um, all side to side and just get a nice picture of them um, so I can post it online and say these things are for sale. So I've got photos taken of everything. Now I'm, uh, I gotta scan the artwork. Pro tip, always scan your artwork because you never know when you're gonna need copies of that artwork again. Scanning's done. I'm going to put them up in the shop later today, but uh, for now I thought let's do the bookshelf. Okay, there is uh, a rhyme and a reason to this. There is some organization. Um, yeah, it's a mess. I apologize. I, I organize it every once in a while and then <laughs> after a while it gets back to, um, back to this. Now there's three reasons that I like a fully stocked bookshelf, and it's the reason I have so many books. Number one is there's information in books that you just can't get online. Um, you can do a search online, you can do a search on Wikipedia, you can do um, a search on, on Google Images, whatever, and you just won't get all the information that's out there because everything hasn't been recorded yet. There's still things that that we just don't have access to online. And so I like to collect books that have images and stories and ideas that that I might not um, be able to find very very easily online. Basically there's four or five different sections and uh, here's what they are. So up here we have um, visual reference like ph 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 uh, photographic reference. So this is like places and time periods. We have, you know, the English house and Baroque. If you ever need a, if you ever need reference on Baroque um, style and time period, this actually is a pretty cool book. It's got a lot of interesting, amazing stuff in it. I use some of that for uh, the Balderben comic. Um, 
Then we get into airplanes. This is all my flight stuff. Airplanes, vehicles, um, cars, and science stuff here. And then I have uh, graphic novel anthologies and the bone books. Um, this is instructional books. Number two, I like the, um, the accidental knowledge that you get when you approach a bookshelf. So you, you might be searching for image reference or a story idea, and, and you might have an idea of what you're looking for. And with that bookshelf in front of me, I will see a book I hadn't seen in a while or, or remember a book and, and be drawn to it and kind of get taken down this, this sidetrack or this rabbit hole and, and accidentally learn something or be inspired by something that I wouldn't have had I been... Uh, hand, you know, had I had my information handpicked for me and 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 displayed, you know, in front of me, um, which is what you get when you do an image search or a, a Google search, is um, there's um, this immediacy to it that that it gives you exactly what you're asking for and nothing else. And um, I think you lose something when you when you go that route. I, don't get me wrong. I use Google image search. I use um, Wikipedia all the time, but but when I approach my bookshelf and I'm, I'm looking for something, I like those little accidents that happen where oh, I forgot about this book, I forgot about this image. I you know I may have read it ten times already, or I may have you know uh, seen this image a hundred times before, but I hadn't fully digested it. And this is a chance in the context of what I'm searching for now to where I can get. Uh, new inspiration and, and new ideas that I may not have been exposed to had I been given um, my search results exactly for what I had asked for. Here's my, this is my Behind the Dinosaurs. These are my cool dinosaurs. I love these guys. These are Papo dinosaurs. It's a French manufacturer, I think. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Anyways, behind it, uh, this is my Star Wars section. Uh, and then I have all my animated feature books. This is Sony, the Sony section, and then these are my art of books for animated features. And then these ones are film, film books like um, District Nine. I guess there's a video game book in there too. Anyways, that's those. Um, here we have graphic novels on the top uh, shelf. Graphic novels, Nausicaa is one of my favorites, Hellboy, one of my favorites, uh, Invincible is brilliant. And then above them we have more Hellboy and BPRD. A lot of like foreign, uh, you know, these are my some Asian stuff, uh, Japanese video games or animation. And then I'll have a lot of these tall books here are French, French books. Okay, number three, bookmaking is a craft, and as a, a bookmaker myself, or a person who makes books, um, and I don't mean like building a book, though I've done those in the past, um, I mean a person who who creates artwork and, and writes stories that are put together in a book, and, and there's thought and there's care taken for um, all the different aspects that go into into that book. So, because bookmaking is a craft, and, and I and I love making books myself, um, I love collecting books, not just for the content, but for the presentation of the content. So I, I'm I'm I love books for, and I look at books not only just you know what, what what's the book about, but what's the binding like, what's the paper stock, what's the the cover treatment. You know, how does, the, how does the ink sit on the page, sit on the particular paper that they wrote? And so I collect books for that as well. I want to see uh, and hold and, and look at what other people have, you know, put a lot of thought and energy into. And, and all that inspires and it motivates me to to do the same with my books and to, to take the craft of my bookmaking up to the, the highest level that I'm able to do. Okay, down below... Uh, on this level, these are all art books, like little sketchbooks and stuff. Here we have Creature Box. Um, here we have Hellboy, 
10th anniversary. Scotty Young, Corey Loftus, that kind of stuff. Uh, and then some other smaller uh, graphic novels. And then these are all my like animal reference books. So this is cool. Uh, Animals Real and Ima Imagined with Terrell Whitlatch. Um, this is a, a great reference, just a catalog of skulls. Dinosaurs, and then these are all children's books. And then down here, my old Calvin Hobbes when I was a kid. Uh, art books, like big art books for some of my favorite artists. This book was a big influence on me when I was younger. Um, learned a lot of graphic design from that book. This book is beautiful. The Orientalists. Lots of great paintings in there. Um, this book too, super influential. I got this I think in sixth grade. Michael Wellen's Works of Wonders, Wonder. Um, and it just made me want to become an illustrator. Though I've never quite reach this level of, of uh, ability. Anyway, the guy's a genius. Um, and then here I have more French graphic novels, um, art books for Japanese anime. These things are really, really handy for reference. Um, and they just have frame by frame animation art. Uh, just really good for you know getting um, getting posing and just the kinetic feel of, of their drawing uh, so there's that and then more art books um, over here some my uh, Miyazaki books here man this book I love this book Daydream Notes this is Miyazaki's like um, comics that he did for a, a magazine in Japan. Uh, I think we have the original Porco Rosso comic in here that led to the movie. Yeah, there we go. Um, and then down here, this stuff that's out on the ground. This is stuff that I'm like currently just looking at and referring to. Um, oh, this guy's good. MC Barrett. He's a concept artist. Lots of cool stuff in there. Um, Usagi Yojimbo. Love this. This is the, uh, the collection of... They're putting these out in, like, I don't know, combining three books into one. That's really cool. Uh, this book, I don't know what the game is. But, man, this artwork is, is really nice in here. Yeah, so that's a bookshelf, and if you have uh, any questions about any of the books, just let me know in the comments, and um, I think that's it. Alright, bye. I just want to say, it's always kind of nerve-wracking for me whenever I put any original artwork in the shop, um, because I want it to sell, and it, and I love it when it sells, but I also am going to miss the artwork. Like, I want to keep the artwork, too. But I also want other people to have the artwork. So it's like this, you know, it's this, this give and take of, of emotions, right? And then the other thing is, is if a piece doesn't sell, I get to keep it. But that means nobody wanted it. So that there is also, like, this, this anxiety that I have. Um, and so that's why a lot of times I just, I don't put my original art up. Because there's so much emotional baggage that goes along with it um, but uh, if you look I did go ahead and, and put the artwork up today and um, you can see here things are selling selling this guy sold this guy sold uh, these Star Wars monsters sold still two left at the time of this recording so that's good um, but yeah now I have to get rid of the pieces but people got them <laughs> I'm, I'm a mess. Just want to point out it's 9.25 p.m. and I did my shower.